well for those of you who talk to animals or whatever, and then we'll sort of talk and answer your questions around here. I even have some questions that were sent. So if you got a question, we're going to raise your hand and just ask me, and I'll be more than glad to answer you. I channel the answer anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't have to worry about it. It's like, <laughs> tap it in, baby. Um, so it's like, so, you know, before I do these, I say, would you tell me, you know, please share with me the, um, the words I need to say to benefit those hearts that I need to help heal. Um, and the way I got started on reincarnation is because I could see in animal bodies, I mean, I can see in human bodies and animal bodies, all right? And I'm getting ready to teach a veterinary medical intuitive course. And I've half written the book because my dad died, who was almost 100, and my mom's 98, and she's um, legally blind, and I'm sort of her caregiver. So that makes your day changeable at the phone call. Um, but I'm getting ready to do the book on animal medical intuitiveness so that you can use it for veterinary isms, and uh, we'll certify you and um, you know, we've got all sorts of tests and things to prove that you're actually really good and accurate. Um, but it's, I have to wait, because I'll write a little bit, and then mom needs my attention, and the book sort of gets put over here. And um, I feel good about that, because that's my first thing, is taking care of mom, because she took care of me when I was little, and the book can come second. But um, that's how I started, is I was looking inside animals, and somebody said, well, if you can see inside of them, and you can talk about their past disease, and you can talk about their present disease, why don't you look at their future disease? And I said, no problem. With um, folks who have cancer, I can tell you if you have a metastasis, I just simply look at it and say, wow, you got a metastasis in your left hip, and they not, need not only to x-ray your left hip, but they need to do your spine. <laughs> After we looked at their organs, I said, I'll try it. Why not? So I said my little prayer and hopefully protected myself and got down and I said, all right, let's see what we got. Well, this was interesting. What I do is I say to the pet, all right, show me your past lives. And I look to the left and I did a radio show that explains all this that I look to the left and I see all their past lives. It comes up like videos. It's pretty cool. And I get to look at them and see what they're in. Like one fellow had on Leder Holtzen and stuff, and he was with this little dog. And I went, ooh, you were a baker in Germany and blah, 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 blah. And I said, and then the life before that, you were an accountant in London. And while you were an accountant, the girl that's your girlfriend now was your secretary back then. He said, really? <laughs> and by the way, the dog thinks she's got fat calves. Whew. Well, I always tell exactly what the animal says, because the truer you are to saying exactly the truth, the more will flow through you, because the universe is trusting you to say exactly. And I don't filter it, and I don't do it on an as-needed basis. You just get what I get. If I don't get anything, you hear me say, I didn't get anything. You don't get anything. Um, so I look at that, and then I look at their present life, like they are now, and I look inside their bodies. And all of this is after I've asked permission, because if you don't ask a pet's permission, you don't get 100% accuracy in your readings. You just get whatever they want to show you. It's sort of like, sort of. You can only have this much and no more. And you go, I don't want this much and no more. I want 100%. Well, maybe I'll talk to you. And I had a cat that just took forever. Cats have a lot of attitude, and sometimes they just won't talk to you like they should. And I told this cat had, uh, Nikki was his name, and I said, Nikki, you need to talk to me because i got to fix your bladder infection. And he said, Nope. Well, long time, we finally talked to Nikki, and I said, do you like going to the bathroom and having your bladder expressed every other day by the vet? With that, he went, no, I don't. And I said, well, in that case, let me look at you so we can figure out what it is. And I did, and we got rid of it. So um, when I look at the pet in the present, we talk to them about what they want to know, how, and mine is more focused around the death of the pet or what they're going to do. And I look, and a lot of people have said, well, I don't know how my pet died. And you can, we had a golden retriever. And the golden retriever just was gorgeous. And she died in the back seat and she was only six months old and they went in to get something at Hardy's and came back and she was dead. And what had happened is she'd had a brain aneurysm. So a lot of times part of what I do around the transition is look inside their bodies and tell the person what happened. And if they were in pain, I tell the person, yes, they were in pain. 
um, and I explained why and what was happening. Then, because I can access those frequencies, I go into the future frequencies, and that's the coolest part ever. Once the pet dies, they cross the death line, and the death line is an electromagnetic area that's dark black. And the reason it's black is because there's no energy in it. So the pet soul crosses over the electromagnetic death line, I call it, and then they transform into the other side, gorgeous, like a sparkler. It's like, it's beautiful. And I just usually go, Ooh, because I have as much fun doing these because it's like going to a party. I never know what I'm going to see until I get there. Because people say, well, you're checking with my pet. Well, no, I got to ask the pet first, and then we'll go through this process. But when you get to see it, then you saw on the other side and you'll say, okay, if you're going to reincarnate, show me what you're going to look like. Well, I had this little Australian Kelpie turn around and go, <laughs> and I'm going, well, that's attractive. And he went, and I went, <laughs> um, um, uh, ma'am, your dog is showing me his behunkus, and he's shaking his little rear end at me, and it's not really attractive, but he just keeps doing it, and I don't know what he's trying to show me, because when you talk to a pet that's reincarnated, you want to see a cat preen or something, they're like going, see my new paw? Check out the nails. This one's black, the other's a pink. Or like, and you go, okay, what's that? Well, this little dog around his rectum had a little white circle. And he was proud of that little white circle. <laughs> so I said to her, okay, when you get your puppy, go lift up his tail. And if he has a little red, little white circle around, that's your dog. Of course, he showed me other things too. But that's one of the things we do when we look at them because they will all, they formulate. It's like they go from sparkle dust, you know, like fairy dust. They cross the death line and then they like whoo, into fairy dust. And then they start recoagulating and they'll come up with like a paw or the little rear end, or they'll go, you go, oh, great ear. Anything special about that ear? And then all of a sudden the ear will get Phew. ear fur. And you go, oh, the left ear is gonna have Phew. ear fur. And then you say, well, what color is the ear fur? And then all of a sudden it'll turn brown. You go, okay, white ear with brown ear fur. And one of the things that um, I enjoy is that watching the pets formulate because they are like Miss Beauty Queen, I am Miss Universe, check out this. Or if they go limp, they'll come doing like this. I had a girl that her cat, she said, I want a white cat. I went, not gonna have a white cat, cat's beige. Got a beige tail, beige. And she said, he's gonna have blue eyes. No, he's gonna have gold eyes. And he's gonna limp in the rear. She said, why is he gonna limp? I said, cause he got hurt in the last lifetime and he's gonna limp. She said, I only want a white cat. Cat says, if you want me to come back, you'll take me this way or I'm not coming back. She said, fine, I'll take you that way. Had another cat that was black. Cats, really. Mm. Um, I like them, because if they talk, whew, they're good. Cat said, mother said, um, I want a black and white tuxedo. Cat said, not doing it. She said, but I love boy cats, and I love tuxedo cats and black cats, and that's all I really want. Cat says, I'm coming back as a long-haired yellow female, because I haven't done that, and I want to do that. So if you don't want it, I'll go to somebody else. She went, no, I'll take that. So there are a lot of times when the owner says, this is not what I want, that the pet will speak right up and go, not happening. This is what's really gonna happen and they'll show you. So if they're not coming back, that's when I sit down with them and I say to you, okay, if you're not coming back, tell me why. And usually if a pet is not coming back, <laughs> dog's relaxed. Um, it's a spiritual reason, both he and the owner. Um, it's a spiritual reason. And usually it teaches the animal love. And we call these God animals. And God animals have a purpose, like a, a bomb squad dog, or a dog that saves a child, or um, we had a dog that we're doing a show with tomorrow that he woke his owner up in the middle of the night and just said, Mom, get up. Telepathically, she heard, Mom, get up and the house was on fire. And then he passed. Well, he was a god dog and he's not coming back. So a lot of animals who are not coming back are god dogs. Then there are those animals that are just not coming back because they finished their work in this incarnation. And we sit down and we talk to those and we say, why? 
because usually an owner is comfortable if they know the why of it and it makes their heart rest and it gives them peace of mind rather than just why and they're just racking the head because they don't have the ability to talk to the other side and find out why so that's how we deal with those who are not coming back